A research team at the Center for Industrial and Medical Ultrasound has developed an ultrasound-based system to speed the passage of kidney stones. We have it's built a prototype device. Mm -hmm. We could buy these components. This system uses commercial ultrasound components to locate stones and kidneys. It creates clear pictures of the stones and then applies an acoustic radiative force, repositioning the stones so they are more likely to pass naturally from the kidney. A startup company, Sonomotion, has been founded in an effort to bring this ultrasound therapy to clinics and hospitals around the world. As a research group, we've focused on getting to the point of a clinical trial and demonstrating that this works in people. And uh, our solution is to use basically an ultrasound machine, put one probe, put it on the skin, find the kidney, see it on the image, push a button over here to turn on the ability to focus the ultrasound and then push that stone. And it shot right out of there. We took that system down to the American Neurological Association annual meeting. We let anybody in the expo come by and try it out. Uh, in particular, we were also invited to the Stone Society, the, the urologists that specialize in treating kidney stones, to give our presentation. They received it so well that they all kind of went in mass over to our exhibit and tried out the system. Um, extremely favorable results. Uh, my name is Ryan C. I'm one of the urology residents working with uh, Dr. Bailey over the last six months. One of the things that has been really pushed by our uh, national organization, the American Urological Association, is the use of hands-on ultrasound by urologists. Urologists will have to learn how to use the device and learning how to image the kidney stone and be able to push it with the, with the device. We've developed a number of models, including stones in a water bath that demonstrate the uh, stone being pushed away from the device to phantoms that you could push through a maze to more realistic uh, models that involve a human torso with a, a kidney that's realistic under the ultrasound. And then this year they invited us back to give a plenary talk and this is called the state of the art session and the urologists I've talked to say this is unprecedented because we're still a laboratory experiment in their eyes that we have not been used in people yet. Um, it's not really state of the art because it's still research but that, I think they're that excited to see this coming that uh, they, they want to try it. There we go. Nice. It's common for there to be leftover pieces or fragments uh, or dust or gravel after we do a treatment for a stone. Sometimes those clear on their own, but oftentimes they don't. And they can grow into bigger stones that then require an additional treatment. And so one of the um, arguments in favor of this therapy is that um, it's not invasive and um, we suspect it won't have much discomfort and it'll allow us to clear out some of those fragments that tend to be left over. At this point we've really demonstrated we can expel the small stones out of the kidney that tend to be trapped that account for a third of the lithotripsies that are done. Uh, these are shockwave treatments, surgeries on stones, that's over a hundred thousand uh, treatments in the US each year that we would save. These get reimbursed at um, five to ten thousand dollars from from insurance for the health cost to health care. So that's five hundred million to a billion dollars of savings right there if we could just expel these and save those people during the treatment. We have a team of about twenty five people that includes uh, engineers to build this whole system, uh, acoustics experts to measure the outputs to make sure we're in safety levels. Uh, students have been a large part of uh, all those processes. Uh, then we have urologists as well as urology residents who are, who are training to be urologists as part of our team directing how it's used clinically uh, and then writing publications, presenting to their community, speaking the language that they, they hear. We've worked very closely with C4C throughout. One of the aspects that C4C takes care of is patenting the uh, invention disclosures that we create and guiding us in how to explain what we've done and, and how that's patentable. They have submitted on our behalf uh, one application for a patent in the United States and then they submitted that same patent in Europe and in Japan uh, to continue to 
protect the main ideas of repositioning kidney stones, then we have to plan going forward to start an ultrasound company that builds a product like this. At this point, we've partnered with the hardware manufacturer who is uh, based in Washington, the state of Washington. But ultimately, we believe there would be a Washington-based company supplied by all Washington state components that send this hardware to us in a very finished form. Our company, Sono Motion, adds the software to move stones and then does the final testing for that component and then ships these off all around the world to treat stones. This is a worldwide disease. It affects 5 to 15 percent of the population of the world. Science at work for you. This is APL, the Applied Physics Laboratory at the University of Washington in Seattle.